this new moon is the catalyst of that. We are going to feel like we are entering an entirely new timeline of our lives. Welcome back, Astro fam, to this video on the new moon in Scorpio. Every single year when we get to the new moon in Scorpio, I always know it's going to be an intense season because Scorpio is intense. It rules transformation, death and rebirth. It's all about transmuting energy. I think of alchemy when I think of Scorpio. It's like taking coal and turning it into diamonds, lemons into lemonades, silk into gold. We are going to go through a magical transformative experience every year when we get to the new moon in Scorpio. But this year, it is all of that maximized tenfold. So buckle up. We have a lot to talk about today. It is truly going to be an intense energy that we're all going to feel. So I'll break all of that down today. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Mandy Rose. I'm a relational astrologer, which essentially means that I use the current cosmic weather to help you have better relationships. But today we're going to start out with a little bit of an overview, a highlight of what we're going to energetically be experiencing during this new moon and Scorpio season. Then I want to give you five fun facts, some really interesting things about the new moon and Scorpio that's happening in 2023. We have a new moon in Scorpio every single year during Scorpio season, this time of the year, but each year it's different because of what the other life coach planets are up to at the specific lunation. So I'm going to give you five fun facts. Then we're going to break down Scorpio energy a little bit deeper to truly understand what new beginning, new moon, new fresh start, what new energy we're supposed to be increasing in our life. We need to understand what Scorpio truly embodies. Once we've done that, we can go more into the specifics. So I'll pull up the chart. We'll talk about where all the other planets are at the time of this new moon and how they're helping to guide us on our journey and get through this energetic season. Then, of course, I'm going to bring you all 12 rising signs. I'm going to break down what relationships in your life are going to be impacted under this new moon in Scorpio, depending on your rising sign. So stay tuned for that. And like I do at the end of all of my new and full moon videos, I give you activities or rituals that you can do around the time of the new moon to work with and maximize this energy. So let's start out with the overview. Let's do a preview. Let's zoom out a little bit. What is going on cosmically as we're moving into this new moon in Scorpio? First of all, it's been Scorpio season for a while now. The sun has been in Scorpio for 20 days at this point. So we've already energetically been feeling this movement of transformation, of kind of figuring out where are we going next, wanting to take our current situation and change it into something bigger and better, right? Where in your life have you been feeling like, I don't want to be stuck anymore. I want to make a change. Like I am so done. And we just got out of eclipse season, right? Which helped us recognize and helped us see the people specifically, but also the situations in our life that like we don't want to participate in anymore. And the sun moved into Scorpio. And so now we're like, let's do the work. Let's transform. Mars is the ruling planet of Scorpio. So it's a very action oriented energy. Like, let's make it happen. Let's dig things up. Mars is the ruler of the show at this time. Like he literally is the star. He is the one that we are like watching with, you know, binoculars and saying, what the heck is Mars up to right now? Because that is seasoning and flavoring the energy heavily at this time. Mars as an energy is the masculine, right? So it's about doing, it's about creating, it's about going out and fighting for the things that you want. That's the energy. That's the influence that we're feeling. Like I'm grabbing life by the horns. I'm sick of sitting in the passenger seat or the back seat. I'm in the driver's seat. Like I'm making this happen in my life right now. Mars, consider him like the investigator, the researcher, the detective. He wants to get down to the bottom of things. Like, why isn't this working? Why is this person not, you know, telling me this information? Why am I not able to break through this problem? Like, let me dig down a little bit deeper. So just know that it's an intense energy that we're feeling at this time. Now we have other planets, and we're going to talk more about this when we get to the specifics, that are heavily contributing to this. One of them being Uranus. Uranus is opposite the new moon, like directly opposite. We know that oppositions bring to us opportunities for change. It is like make a decision, right? One planet over here, one planet over here. We're in the middle on planet Earth. And so we're like, do we go this way or do we go that way? It's like decision making time, left or right, A or B. Like we have to break the cycle. And so Uranus being opposite the sun, opposite the moon and opposite Mars in Uranus is the rebel, the revolutionary. Choose change. It's time to move forward. We can't do this anymore. With moon, our emotions, the sun, our ego, our identity, what we want out of life, and Mars, which is like, take action, do the damn thing. 
it's an intense energy. We also have, you know, the other planets involved. So we'll get to all of that. But just remember, Scorpio is a water energy. Water energies deal with our emotions. It is the deepest emotions that we feel as souls in a human body when we talk about Scorpio. So it is obsession. It is jealousy. It is anger. It is power. It is needing to control things. It is grief. It is trauma. It is fear. It is all those really hard, low density emotions. And so we get to Scorpio season and we've been here for 20 days now. We're having to address them. The sun is shining a spotlight on it, right? The sun gets into Scorpio in the sky. It's heating up. It's showing us. It's helping us see clearly and literally radiating down upon those low density feelings that we have. We just keep shoving them down, keep shoving them down. Those are going to be exposed right now. Those are going to be revealed. So just know that is something we are feeling at the time of this new moon. Also, we must address the fact that Mars is the ruler of the North Node, right? Mars rules Scorpio, but he also has a second home in Aries. And the North Node in the sky is in Aries. This is our season, and I've been talking about it on this channel, our season of main character energy. As the North Node, the North Node being our destiny, the energy we're meant to be focusing on, is moving through Aries for a year and a half, it is all of us stepping into our main character, my life, my needs, my priorities. And this new moon in Scorpio is helping us say, I need to transform my life so that I can be the main character, so that I can get in the driver's seat, so that my needs get met, so that my wants and desires and dreams and hopes and wishes and all these things I want to accomplish on Earth School happens, right? So <laughs> this is really Mars saying, let's step into that main character energy even more. Now, I do want to say with that Uranus opposition of Mars, Mars being our chi, our stamina, our vitality, Uranus being a little sudden and jolting and unexpected, we can be a little bit more accident prone. We can be a little bit more aggressive. We can be impulsive. We can be reckless. We can be following our emotions and not thinking with our head. So just be careful, be cautious under this new moon energy. You can feel it up to three days before to three days after. So just try to slow down and ground yourself. That'll make more sense why when we talk about the specifics. The other thing you want to be aware of is fear, fear coming up because there is a lot going on in the world right now and Scorpio deals with fear. So I want you to just pay attention to how that deep emotion is, is swirling within you and how you can transmute it. Scorpio is ruled by Pluto and Mars. Pluto, P, stands for power, our own personal power, our own inner authority. So where can you step more into your power? Where can you find control in the things that you truly have control over? And that's going to help you mitigate the fear that you may be experiencing. So stay in your own lane, clean up your own backyard, focus on your own life, your main character energy, take control over the things that you have control over and you will feel fear diminishing and your power increasing. It's so optimal at this time. Now, there's a little financial aspect to this new moon in Scorpio. Scorpio is a financial sign, a financial energy, but it deals more with money from external sources. It deals more with money that you share with other people. It deals with debt, taxes, inheritances, the lottery, people giving you money, clients investing in you, people investing in your business. Um, assistance with money, that random check that shows up in the mail. New moons, new beginnings, new fresh starts. You may have some new financial things coming up, debt that you're paying, a new inheritance, a new something that comes out of nowhere. Maybe someone comes to you and says, hey, I want to support you financially in some way. So pay attention to that. But Uranus and Jupiter are over in Taurus, which is opposite in the sky, also a financial sign. So we're dealing with money where Jupiter and Taurus are, and we're dealing with money where the sun and the moon and Mars are. So there could be some financial upsets, some shakeups, some twisting and turning and moving of assets and resources that could be collectively in society or that can be within your own life. So just understand there is this energy of financials going on at this time. Now, I'm going to give you some good news before we move on. Mercury is in Sagittarius. This is our saving grace. Because as we're going through the depth, as we're going through transformation, as we're making decisions, as Uranus is blowing things up in our life and changing things suddenly and abruptly and shockingly, and we feel like the past is falling away faster than we can handle, Mercury in Sagittarius, Sagittarius being an energy of optimism, of faith, of hope, of jovialness, of exploration, of excitement, of adventure, Mercury, our mind, is in that energy. 
So we are going to have this feeling of it's all going to work out. I have trust. I have faith. This is expanding me. This is growing me. I see this as an adventure. How exciting is this? And we're just kind of going by the seat of our pants in our mindset. So that's beautiful. So grateful that Mercury has left Scorpio by this time and moved into Sagittarius. Definitely a saving grace for us. So let's transition. Let's move over to kind of the basics. Let me pull up the chart here just so we know what we're talking about. If you have your birth chart, grab it out. You can mark on your chart where this lunation is happening. This new moon is happening on November 13th, 2023 at 4.27 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So go ahead and adjust that for your time zone. We can see the sun and the moon at 20 degrees. So it's at 20 degrees of Scorpio. That's how we know it's a new moon. They're together in the sky, or what I like to say, they're hugging it out, and Mars being right next door at 21 degrees. So lots of energy in Scorpio at this time, with Mars being the ruler, so it just magnetizes that and intensifies it even more. So I want to give you five fun facts. What makes the new moon in Scorpio unique to 2023? We have one every single year in Scorpio season around this time of the year in the fall, but what makes it unique this year? The first thing I just mentioned it, there's a triple Scorpio energy. Mars is the ruling planet and he moves around the zodiac wheel around the sky about every two years. So it's not every year that Mars is in his home sign of Scorpio at the time of the new moon. That didn't happen last year and it won't happen next year. So the fact that we have the sun, the moon, and the ruler Mercury all in Scorpio is a triple Scorpio energy. So when we talk about Scorpio next, all the things I'm going to help you understand about Scorpio energy, I want you to 3x that. Like that's why this is such an intense new moon. It's such a new transformative beginning for us, a great opportunity. The second fun fact is that eclipse season is officially over. The last new moon, which was the new moon in Libra back in October, started the eclipse cycle. Then we had the full moon in Taurus at the end of October. And then the eclipse energy lasts for about two weeks after the eclipse. So on the 28th of October was the lunar eclipse. Two weeks later at this new moon in Scorpio, we are officially done with eclipse season. So now we're kind of back to regularly scheduled programmed energy where we set new intentions, we release things from our life, and we make our own conscious choices. We have a little bit more free will. Eclipses kind of take that away, and it's kind of like course correction from the universe, and a lot of things are happening to us. Now we're back in the driver's seat. Now we're making decisions, and we are interjecting our choice, our free will out into our lives. The third fun fact about this new moon in Scorpio in 2023 is the fact that it's happening opposite in the sky where we're going to have the most beautiful cosmic weather event in 2024. What do I mean by this? Next year, Jupiter, our planet of blessing, expansion, growth, abundance, luck, we love Jupiter, is meeting up in the sky with Uranus. This happens about once every 13 years. Uranus is sudden change, liberation, unexpected surprises, really exciting things that moves us fast forward timeline into the future. And you get this big kabang, amazing, exciting energy. We call it the lottery aspect in astrology. And it's happening next year. It won't happen again for another 13 years. Where it's happening in the sky, it has not happened in this area of the sky in many, many, many decades, centuries maybe even, it's happening directly opposite this new moon in Scorpio. So new moon in Scorpio, new beginning, new transformation. Remember I said it's like the caterpillar went into the cocoon. It transformed, it metamorphosized, and now it's going to break out of the cocoon and it's still going to figure out its wings. It's still got to grow the beautiful wings that it has and fly away and figure out where it's going to live or just float around and make life beautiful. We are at the cracking out of the cocoon phase now in six months at the full moon in Scorpio, and we have this lottery aspect directly opposite in the sky where this new moon is now, we will be the butterfly. We will be getting our wings and flying and figuring out where we're going to go. We're not done yet, but it's gonna be a lot further than where we are still stuck in the cocoon right now. And the Scorpio area where we're having the new moon now is addressing what needs to change. Where do you need to take action? What do you need to do at this time? And when it gets to the Taurus energy in six months, it's about how to develop it, how to make it better, how to improve it, how to make it solid, how to make it sturdy, how to make it stable. How do you make that stick around? So the change now is going to be brought back up and solidified and grounded for the future in six months. The fourth fun fact about this new moon in Scorpio in 2023 is the fact that this new moon is not an eclipse. And I know I just said that we're out of eclipse season. So like, duh, we know it's not an eclipse. But what I mean is for the last two years, 
all the eclipses happened in Scorpio and Taurus. Last year, in 2022, the new moon in Scorpio was an eclipse. And in 2021, the new moon in Scorpio was an eclipse. So here we are in 2023 at the new moon again, and it's not an eclipse. We are done with this cycle. This Scorpio area of life has had a lot of transformation. We've had eclipses taking things away from us, stripping us of things, letting us release traumas, letting us release fears, letting us release control, letting us release and move the area of life that Scorpio rules for us. And we're going to get to that when we get to the rising sign forecast. And now we are done with that. So super exciting. It's not an eclipse this year. It won't be an eclipse again for another seven years. And the fifth final fun fact about this new moon in Scorpio happening in 2023 is the fact that this is such a transformative new moon. It is the most transformative new moon of the year because Scorpio rules transformation. And this is an energy that we're going to feel over the next 28 day lunar cycle. So whatever new beginning happens, it doesn't necessarily happen on the new moon in Scorpio. We are going to be evolving and breaking out of our cocoon for the next month. This is going to really linger on longer than any other new moon we've experienced this year. So just know that this is a process. This is not going to happen overnight. Now, there might be something sudden, something shocking, something unexpected that happens, but we're going to address that and work with it and transform it and alchemize it and turn it into a diamond over the next 28 days. So there's a process that's going to be happening that's starting at this new moon, which is very different from other new moons. So to break it down, let's kind of dive into Scorpio energy, right? We've highlighted, we've talked a lot about it, but I want you to truly understand Scorpio energy because that's the only way you can really grasp the intensity of this new moon. First thing, Scorpio is actually a feminine energy, which I know sounds completely crazy because you're like, wait, Mars is the ruler, Pluto's the ruler. Like they're very masculine. How can Scorpio be feminine? Because it's the act of our emotions. It's the act of making things happen in flow, in rhythm, right? So we're forcing things, but we're going with the flow as we transform. It's a process. So it is a feminine energy. It's also a water energy. So we are dealing with emotions, those deep, deep, deep repressed emotions. When we think of the water of Scorpio, the energy, what it would feel like, I want you to think of like white water rapids, right? If you get sucked up in that whirlwind, you are getting sucked under, you're going in. And that's what that emotional intensity of Scorpio is like. So obsession, right? If you like love something, you're all in. If you have fear, it is overwhelming. It's all consuming. If you have anger, like you see red, right? Like those emotions that we have that we're like, oh, it just takes me over. That's what we're dealing with with Scorpio energy. Now, I also want you to see Scorpio as something that's about unearthing. It's about below the surface. Like what is down underneath? What are the skeletons in the closet? What are the things that we shove away, that we hide from the light of day, that we don't want to expose, that we don't want to reveal? It deals a lot with secrets, right? It's these things that like, oh my gosh, if someone knows about this, they're going to have an extreme emotional reaction and I don't want them to feel that because it's so intense. So I'm just going to shove it down below the surface. So there is this element of like, what's underneath? What don't I know? What do I need to unearth? What do I need to uncover? What do I need to dig out of the closet and clear out? So there's this very like detoxing energy when it comes to Scorpio. I consider it like this. If you have a plant and it died and it's sitting in a pot in your house, you just leave it there and the roots get rotten and the dirt starts to smell and it's like decaying and it's not pretty, right? But it exists. Even if you don't look at it, it's still there. So eventually you're going to have to dig out the roots. You have to clean out the pot and you're going to have to plant something new in it. That is the process. That's that death and rebirth cycle. It's transformation, transmutation. Let's clean it out, unearth it, and plant something new and beautiful. So there is this unearthing, exposing energy, detoxing out what doesn't serve. It's about accepting. It's there, right? People do parasite cleanses and liver cleanses. Like We just have to accept it's there and we have to address it and detox it out so that things can feel more beautiful. So I want you to overall think of Scorpio season, Scorpio new moon, Scorpio energy as this shedding of this releasing of saying, okay, the old has died metaphorically. We can let it go and we're going to now start something new. So new moons in Scorpio is just mega, mega transformative energy. Something that we can really just say, I have alchemized the lemons in my life into lemonade turn my mess into a message. It's taking this and turning it into that. So I hope you feel inspired and I hope you feel called to take action at this time and that the energy that we're feeling, although it can be shocking and sudden and unexpected, it's for a purpose. 
And we're going to get to that purpose in six months when we get to the full moon in Scorpio and have that lottery aspect with Jupiter and Uranus exactly opposite in the sky than when we're having this new moon. So with that, let's dive into the specifics. I'm going to pull up the chart. This is going to be kind of a quick overview. If you have your birth chart, you can kind of mark on your chart where all these planets are located and we can just see what's going on in the sky, what the other planets are up to, kind of contributing and adding to the lesson we're meant to be learning at this time. So first things first, we find the sun and the moon at 20 degrees of Scorpio, Mars right next door at 22 degrees, and we can see they are all opposite Uranus. <laughs> so when you have the moon opposite Uranus, if that was just an isolated situation, moon is our emotions. It's what we need for stability and security, what makes us feel comfortable. And Uranus is trying to shake us awake and liberate us and saying, hey, that person doesn't make you feel safe. Why are you spending time with them? Being in that home environment doesn't make you comfortable. Why are you living there? Why are you not protecting and nurturing yourself? So he might shake things up, make us force a decision, opposition, to create more security and comfort and emotional well-being. The sun opposite Uranus, an isolated situation. The sun shining a spotlight on, heating us up, right? It's allowing us to shine. It's allowing us to step into our own identity. And Uranus is like, hey, like that, that isn't you. You need to step into your authentic self. You need to shine, like take out and cut out things that don't allow you to be that way. And then you have Mars, your masculine, wanting to take action, wanting to make decision, wanting to go for something, wanting to sometimes be a little aggressive in the pursuit of your desires. And Uranus is like, I I'm here to help you. I'm here to liberate you. I'm helping you kind of move into the next chapter. I'm just going to do it very quickly and suddenly and cut it away from you. And you're going to have to accept it. So you take the sun, moon and Mars opposite Uranus. It just explodes that. So I just want you to recognize that this is really creating freedom and liberating you. It might be sudden, it might be shocking, but this is breaking you out of a cycle. This is breaking you out of the shackles that your life has become. It might be aggressive. It might be intense. You might have to have a really hard conversation with somebody. You might have to scream and shout a little bit. You might have to make a very sudden change, a very abrupt decision. But it's going to feel and you're going to honor that because it's coming from a place of emotional depth, a place of truth, a place of your main character energy. Um, and it's time to do it now. It's the universe supporting you and doing it now. Don't wait. And it might be forced upon you. It might be so obvious that like you can't close your eyes from it. It is unearthing, revealing a secret. It is showing you something very clearly that has been hidden and you're going to have to take action. The other thing we have to talk about is that Scorpio has two ruling planets, right? It has Mars. We talked about Mars and how he's participating at this time, but we also have Pluto and Pluto is now direct. He has come out of retrograde just very recently. And so he's moving forward and he's at 28 degrees of Capricorn. This is the last time that he's going to be at this place in the sky. He is going to move into Aquarius in January. And yes, he will tap back into Capricorn, but only at 29 degrees. So he is moving his way out and he's like, hey, power, control, manipulation, breaking things down, destroying things, crumbling things, right? Revealing things that need to be exposed in Capricorn, power structures, institutions, things that have rules and boundaries around them, limitations. And we're now going to have to say, you know what, this, these rules don't apply to me. This situation is not my best interest. I want to break out of this little boundary, this little box. I want to do it in a more unconventional way. And so we're having to address where we are trying to control our life. We are trying to manipulate our life. We're trying to implement rules that don't even apply anymore. What traditions do you need to break? Now, like we said, Mars is ruling the North Node in Aries, where we are focusing our attention and moving towards Aries, our North Node of main character energy. So one ruling planet, Mars, is ruling the North Node. And Pluto, our other ruling planet of this new moon in Scorpio, is square the nodes. And we know squares create tension points, decisions. We have to pick a side. So Pluto, who is about destroying things, power is putting pressure on us again to step into that north node of Aries. We have this opportunity to heal something so deep within ourselves. Grief, fear, control, um, betrayal issues, uh, where someone broke your heart, where there is trauma. Like, oh, we can like catalyst ourselves forward. We can turn our mess into a message. Like we can step into the next chapter of our life and leave all that behind turn it into something beautiful. It's so freaking exciting. I, I think you could tell the more I talk about it, it's like, holy moly, this is actually happening, but I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's scary. It's, it's life changing. It's intense. It's overwhelming. It's all consuming. It, it's Scorpio water, emotional energy. 
but we can do this. We can get through this. Just to know as a relational astrologer, this is going to impact your relationships. The one you have with yourself, the one with the people around you, you're going to notice people around you are also being impacted and stepping into this energy. So hold space for that and honor that. I want to kind of bring up real quick Neptune and his involvement. He has a really beautiful energy to contribute to all of this because Neptune is in a trine because he's in Pisces and the new moon is in Scorpio. They're both water energies. So they're in a trine, which is a harmonious aspect. And Neptune is the dreamer. Neptune is our spirituality. Neptune allows us to kind of get out of our human experience and see the higher picture, right? Like, what is the purpose? What is our soul mission? Like, why is this all happening? And to have faith and to trust that this is for something better. And he's in a trine and he's very supportive of this energy. So he's going to help you dream. He's going to allow you to really actually see like, hey, I can turn this lemon into a lemonade. I can take this piece of coal and make it into a diamond. It's possible. The dream is there. The vision is there. And that's going to help us. So meditating, dream journaling, anything that's going to allow you to tap into that like expansive, higher conscious mindset is going to be amazing at this time. So beautiful support here. Um, don't react to things. Don't get angry. Like don't get into the fire that, you know, passionate, intense anger control kind of stuff. Don't let those deeper vibrations hold you there get into that meditative state and see how you can transmute it, how you can transform it. And lastly, just a quick reminder, Mercury and Sagittarius, beautiful energy, allowing us to have faith, allowing us to have optimism, allowing us to kind of see this an adventure, to allow us to explore and learn and, and just be more jovial because Sagittarius is a fire energy and it kind of just goes with the flow. And it's like, yeah, you know, this is all great and all. Thank gosh for Mercury and Sagittarius. So that's all I wanted to kind of show you on the chart. So much going on. I think I've summarized everything I possibly can with this new moon without going overboard. So let's go into the rising signs. I'm going to break down each rising sign and what relationships in your life is getting this new beginning. What area of your life do you need to address that you can transform and have the power to turn into a diamond at the time of this new moon in Scorpio? Today we're going to switch it up and we're going to actually start with Scorpio risings. I feel bad always doing Pisces at the end. So we're going to embrace this transformative, unexpected, surprising energy of the new moon and start with Scorpio. So my Scorpio risings, this puts the new moon in Scorpio, the transformation, the new beginning in your first house, which is the relationship you have with yourself and your identity. So I want you to really consider how you can metamorphosize, how you can transmute your current opinion and appearance out into the world changing your hairstyle, changing your fashion, changing your energy, um, really looking at how you show up in the world and how you can transmute that and make a diamond out of it. Do you need to get a makeover? Do you need to go through your wardrobe? Do you need to go over your social media profiles from an outside perspective and say, how do people vision me? How do they see me when I show up? So this is a transformation opportunity for you in your house of identity. Now that may come with a sudden surprise or revelation or something that's happening in Taurus, your seventh house of relationships. So maybe an intimate partner says to you, hey, you put on some weight or hey, um, I've noticed that you don't dress up anymore. This could be shocking. This could be upsetting. This could be abrupt and kind of make you feel angry, but it's catapulting you. It's helping you transform your identity. So just accept it and honor it and allow it and see it as the bigger picture of what your life's going to look like if you take this advice and move through this energy. My Sagittarius risings, this is going to put this new moon, this transformative, powerful energy in your 12th house. This is the relationship with you and your own worst enemy in your mind. I need you to transform and catapult yourself into a new way of thinking, your limiting beliefs, your self-sabotage, your victimization. How are you your own enemy? in everything that you do in life. This is a new beginning. This is you saying no more. I am taking control of the thoughts that I think, of the beliefs that I have. I'm not holding myself back. I'm going to launch myself forward. I'm gonna sit in meditation. I'm gonna start a spiritual practice. You need to really transform this energy. Now, there could be a sudden shocking upset from your sixth house of Taurus that deals with your health. There might be a health thing that comes up. Maybe there's um, a revelation in your blood work. You go to the doctor. Maybe there's something that makes you realize like, hey, I'm not prioritizing my health. And now I need to change the way that I think, the way that I, you know, victimize myself and say, woe is me. No, I'm taking control and I'm changing my mind. So it changes my physical health. 
So that's something you want to pay attention to. And in six months, when we get to that full moon in Scorpio, you're going to have this beautiful butterfly, this most beautiful mindset, a beautiful spiritual practice, a beautiful purpose. So this new moon in Scorpio is about you versus you and your physical health versus your spiritual, energetic, and mental health. Capricorn Risings, this puts this new moon in Scorpio, this transformative, beautiful catalyst into a new beginning of energy in your 11th house of community, tribe, friendship, social circles. Who are your people? You've probably been stuck in trying to figure out in the last two years with eclipses in this area of your life, you've probably dropped friendships. You've probably had people that you don't identify with anymore. You don't know who your people are. This is that new beginning. Get out there. If you are a mom and now you're trying to work and network with business minded people, if you've been in a certain profession for a long time and all your friends were also in that industry and now you're wanting to have friends that maybe like to go to the movies or like to go do fun things, this is your opportunity, Capricorn Risings, to form that new social circle. This also deals with your dreams and your hopes and your wishes. Maybe you've had a dream for a long time to accomplish something and that's fallen away over the last two years. You don't prioritize that anymore. You don't want that dream or that vision. And now this new moon in Scorpio is allowing you to get into your main character energy and say, this is the North Star I wanna go for. This is what I wanna achieve and succeed and accomplish in my life. So just be careful because your fifth house is where Taurus is and that's where Jupiter and Uranus might shock you, might liberate you, might create some sort of unexpected surprise to help you find more friends. And so this could be something like, Maybe you go out to um, a sporting event and you just have so much fun there that you're like so surprised that maybe you didn't like that sport before, but you like the people that go and participate in that sport. So now that leads you to a new friendship group. There can be an unexpected activity, adventure, hobby, something that kind of comes across your path that helps liberate you from what you used to do allows you to have more fun, and that ultimately leads you to this new moon in Scorpio in your 11th house of new friendship circles, new community, and new tribe. My Aquarius risings, this new moon in Scorpio, so freaking exciting, is happening in your 10th house of your career, your reputation, your legacy, your professional life, the title that people call you. This is your new beginning. Have you been trying to get a new job? Have you been going into a new industry? Have you been going to school for a while and now you're ready to get out there in your professional life? This is the transformative energy. This is you coming out of that cocoon, turning into a butterfly. This is where it happens. But you have to take action. You have to make a decision. You have to break out of what you've always known and always done and try something new. Transform, turn that coal into a diamond. This is your time. But beware with Uranus and Taurus in your fourth house of your home and family, there might be a sudden surprise within your home life, your family life. Maybe someone announces to you that they need to live with you. Maybe you need to move homes. Maybe there's a baby on the way or someone that is going to transform your family life. And that's going to affect your career. So whatever is happening in your home and family, what shocking, unexpected things is going to help you make that final decision, that main character energy of what you need to do. So for instance, maybe it's you need to take in a family member into your home and now you need to make more money to support them. So now you're going to go for that new career. You're going to bite the bullet and apply and take action and go into that new industry. That's what it could kind of look like. So that's an example. So you're looking at the relationships in your professional industry. Who are people that you maybe need to call back, that you need to network with? Maybe it's a boss. Maybe it's someone that's in your industry already, and they're going to help you with this new beginning in this area of life. So look at the relationships that you have around your career, around your industry, around the people that are going to help you build your legacy or help you transform your reputation the new title, the new name you want to be called. So the people that can help you with that is the people you want to be bringing in at the time of this new moon. Now, my Pisces risings, at this new moon in Scorpio, you are going to transform the energy and the relationships in your ninth house. This is your area of mentors, of people in your spiritual community, your religious organizations. These are people that have helped you form and develop your belief systems. This could be you know, an aunt or uncle that you really admired. This could be a teacher or a professor. Maybe there's a shaman that you've been working with and they've really helped you grow around your belief system. If you haven't done this yet, this is the new moon that those people could come into your life. People that really help you expand your mindset, help you expand your consciousness. So transform and allow yourself to learn. Be curious, open your mind, be, be in this metamorphosis of what you believe, what, how you see the world. See the world as an adventure, as an exploration. It's a super exciting transformation and the people in your life that are gonna help you 
open up your mind. Now, you could have this sudden, unexpected, shocking information come to you that has some data or some facts. You know, your third house is where Taurus is. And so you've maybe always had the same concrete belief systems. Taurus is about, you know, sturdy and steady and fixated, and I don't want to change. Maybe you've always just hold, held this to be true. Let me give you an example. Maybe it comes to health. And you've always just believed in conventional medicine, and this is how it's done, and there's facts and data and studies. But this new moon in Scorpio is helping you transform. You meet a mentor. You meet someone that you respect. And they do medicine in a completely different way. And it's not about the facts and the data. It's about experience and wisdom. And they've helped many patients. And now your whole mind is just, what? I can't even believe that this is like possible. So you are changing your belief systems through a new mentor or someone that comes in because you recognize the data and the facts that you've always known may not be as solid as you thought they were, if that makes sense. Now my Aries risings, I know you usually go first, so thanks for being patient. This new moon in Scorpio is happening in your eighth house. We are doing some transformation around relationships tied to money. These are sometimes the hardest relationships that we have, right? So it's like people that invest in you, people that you have to share an inheritance with. Maybe it's people you owe money to. Maybe it's the IRS and the debt that you owe. Whoever you are tied to financially, it could even be your marriage partner or spouse or someone that you share your finances with in your home, like roommates. This is a new beginning. This is a transformation. This is allowing you to say, hey, I know we've always split the bills, but I'm going to take over the bills because I have the power in me and I can handle it and I want to support you. Maybe someone's always invested in you and you're taking your power back and saying, hey, let me actually do something for you. You're changing something. You're transforming the way in which you share money, resources, or assets with another person. It's absolutely beautiful energy. You could also be getting some new beginnings here. So maybe like an unexpected windfall of money comes to you. Maybe a debt is wiped clean. Maybe someone says, you know what, don't worry about it. So really cool new moon in your eighth house. Now there could be a lot of psychic abilities that come up at this time. There could be a lot of um, sudden unexpected healing that comes at this time. Um, Uranus and Taurus is in your second house also of money. So this is like a very um, unexpected maybe income. You get an, a new stream of income. Maybe someone increases your um, salary. Something unexpected happens with your own money that allows you to transform the way in which you share money with the new moon in Scorpio in your eighth house. My Taurus risings, this new moon in Scorpio, this transforming energy is happening in your seventh house of relationships. How exciting. Your most intimate, deepest relationships, your romantic partners, your marriage partners, your business partners, the friends you've had for a long, long time. This is a new beginning in those relationships. Doesn't mean you're necessarily going to have new relationships. It could be if you're single. But if you've been in these deep, intimate relationships for a long time, the energy within them is transforming. It's becoming more beautiful. And you're the one taking action and initiating this change so that it can continue to live on for a long time. So allow it to change. Allow it to shift. Now, it could come unexpectedly. There might be a sudden you know, decision you have to make to keep that relationship going. And that comes from you. Your identity has changed. The way you want to be seen in the world has changed. Maybe if you're a, a female and you've been in your masculine energy where you've been the partner in the relationship that's like, I want to go here on Saturday and I want to make the decisions and you always need to have control and you always need to kind of make everything happen. Maybe you've tapped more into your feminine and maybe you're like, I just want to be in the flow and I want to be more lovey and I want to be more supportive of my partner. Your identity has changed and now you have the sudden awareness of your identity and now you make the decision in your partnership, in your marriage, that you're going to tap into that. So there's this catalyst, this metamorphosis, this beautiful new energy that's being birthed into a beautiful butterfly in your deepest, most intimate relationships. My Gemini risings, this new moon in Scorpio, this amazing transformative energy is happening in your sixth house. This is your house of health and wellness. It deals with the relationships with people that you have on a day-to-day -day basis, the people that you surround yourself with on a regular. So it's your trainer, it's your therapist, it's your coworkers, it's the people in your life that actually help you accomplish things and help you get things done. And definitely in the area of your wellness, your well-being. So maybe you need to transform some of these energies and say, you know what? I need to see my personal trainer more often. I need to call my therapist more often. You're making decisions and taking action in the support of the people in your life that are going to bring more wellness to you. It's this beautiful energy. You have this amazing potential, this alchemy, this magic, this transformation in your health, in your vitality, and allow the people around you who can support you to support you. 
Maybe you hire a chef or a nutritionist. Maybe you hire someone that can coach you with your work life balance. Like this is a, an amazing opportunity to find a coach or therapist or someone that's going to help you transform your well being. Now, you might get the sudden, unexpected, shocking surprise with Uranus and Taurus in your 12th house. So you might have these unconscious thoughts coming up of victimization, of self sabotage, of realizing and recognizing like, I'm telling myself this story. I'm getting in my own way. I'm the one who's holding myself back. And I need to change that so I can step into this new beginning, new energy in Scorpio in my sixth house of health and wellness. So it might be more mental um, revelations and surprises that come up than anything else, but it's catapulting you and launching you into a new beginning in your health. The Cancer Risings, this new moon in Scorpio, this transformative energy is happening in your fifth house. This is your house of relationships tied to romance to people that help you birth things into life, people that help and support your creative projects, your passion projects. These are people that you have fun with. These are people you're on a sports team with. These are people you go out dancing with. The relationships in your life that bring joy and romance and fun and pleasure are getting a transformation. If you are starting to date again, this is a beautiful new energy to step into this new cycle, to turn into a butterfly in your romantic life. If you are wanting to, you know, have some more fun and go dancing, go bowling, go roller skating, the relationships and the people in your life that help you do that is going to really catapult you. It's going to transform. So you might find some people to have some fun with at this time. Now, remember this sudden jolting, unexpected energy of Uranus and Taurus is happening in your 11th house. So there might be an unexpected or shocking revelation around your current friendship circle. Maybe you always relied on these people to go have fun with. And when you call them to have fun, they don't want to go have fun with you. They're not your people anymore. Maybe you ask them to go dancing with you and they're like, no, I just want to stay home and drink all the time. You have this revelation. You realize that those aren't the people that you can always be with to have fun. So now you have this new beginning, new transformation in relationships in your life that bring more joy. So go have some fun, go have some romance, go work on a passion project with someone that is like not tied to any major financial aspect. Just go do something for the hell of having fun. Now my Leo risings, this puts this new moon in Scorpio, this transformative energy in your fourth house. This is amazing because this is your house of home and family. So the relationships in your home life, the people that you live with, your family that either you were born into or the family you've created is getting this magical, beautiful new beginning, this transformation. Maybe it is new people moving into your house. Maybe it's people moving out of your house and you're becoming an empty nester and you have more space. Maybe you are transforming um, you know, where you actually live and this whole energy around home and family just becoming magical. And, and it's gonna take energy. It's going to be this you know, caterpillar tapping out of the cocoon and you don't know where you're going to live. You don't know who's going to live with you. You don't know what that's going to look like in your home and family life, but it's going to be absolutely beautiful. Honor this transformation, whatever that looks like. Now, also remember that Uranus and Taurus is in your 10th house of career. So there might be something unexpected, something surprising, some news, some revelation that's coming from your professional life. Maybe you get laid off and now that's going to change where you live. Maybe you realize that you want to be in a different industry, right? Maybe there's just something in your career that's changing very quickly that causes the way that your home and family life and the relationships within them to look a lot different in the next chapter of your life. But follow your main character energy. What do you want your environment at home to look like? How do you want the people within your home to act? And what do you want that to feel like? Maybe it's about creating a sanctuary in your home that when you come home, this is your space and only your space. Make it into a beautiful butterfly. Now my Virgo risings, this puts this new moon in Scorpio, this transformative, beautiful new energy into your third house. These are the relationships in your life that lead to you teaching, you speaking, you educating. So who are your students? Who are the people that need to hear from you? Who are maybe some teachers that you need to learn from? These are the relationships that you're getting this magical new beginning. If you've wanted to start something on social media, if you wanted to write a book, if you wanted to share your wisdom in some way, Look for the people and the relationships that can help you do that. How can you transform your inner wisdom into a message out into the world? Now, pay attention to the relationships you may have with your students, or maybe you have clients that you're teaching, because you're going to see a shift in that. The way in which you approach teaching, the way in which you approach speaking and educating, it might look different. Maybe you've been very verbal, where you kind of get on phone calls and you share a lot, you know, in person. And maybe you need to now write things down and you want to kind of go a little bit more behind the scenes and make more blog posts. So the way in which you're communicating and the people you're communicating to might be changing at this time. 
Now, Uranus in Taurus in your ninth house is your house of your belief systems, your wisdom, the things that you've learned through experience and your mentors. So maybe what you're changing or the sudden revelation is that your mentors that you've had for a long time, you're graduating from, you're moving on from. All of a sudden you're like, you know what? I have surpassed the master. This is shocking. This is unexpected. I don't need this person in my life. I have become the master. So let me teach. Let me get out there and share my wisdom. That's what that could look like for you. There could also be some sort of transformation within your siblings because your third house does deal with your siblings and your neighborhood. So maybe you're transforming the relationship that you have with your neighbors, or your local community, or maybe the relationship you have with your siblings needs a little upgrade. And my Libra risings, this new moon in Scorpio, this transformative energy, this metamorphosis is happening in your second house of income your money, your assets, your resources, your material possessions, you get to transform this area of your life, but you're going to have to take action and you're going to have to make decisions. The time is now. Do you need to maybe change the way in which you make money? Do you need to go from salary to commission? Do you need to add on another stream of income? Do you need to change some material possession? You want to sell your car and get a new car. Some transformation is happening around your money and your finances and your budget. It's absolutely beautiful, but you got to make the change. Now, there could be a sudden, unexpected, surprising thing that comes up in correlation to money tied to another person because Uranus in Taurus is in your eighth house. So maybe there's an unexpected debt you have to pay. So you have to sell your car, but that's okay because you want a different car anyways. Maybe there's um, you know a windfall of money or someone gets a bunch of money and they invest in you and that changes um, the way that you need to make income. There's something happening financially unexpected with someone else that you're tied to financially, a debt, inheritance, an asset, something like that. And that's impacting the way in which you make money and how you're going to change that area of life. Maybe you need to change your budget. Maybe you need to change and release and let go of some things in your life that are cluttering up your home so that you can buy new things when you get to that stage in six months, when we get to the full moon in Scorpio and you become the butterfly in your budget and your income sector. Um, so maybe there's some letting go, some shedding of things. Maybe there's some unearthing and releasing of things at this time around your income, assets, resources, and material possessions. So that is all 12 rising signs. Let me give you a couple activities and rituals that you can do around the time of this new moon to maximize this energy, to flow and work with it, and to really support you with this intensity. First thing I would do is really look at some spiritual practice. This is the energy of magic, of alchemy, of transformation. So you could meditate, you could go get um, you know, a card reading, you could do a sound bath, you could do a breath work session, any activity where you're really taking the current stuck energy and transforming it into something more beautiful. So breath work takes stored and stuck traumas and transforms it into healing. Um, sound bowls or sound baths take your current energy and transform them into higher vibrations or chakra alignment. So just look at things that you can work with and flow with the magic and play with energy at this time. The second activity I would definitely plan for this new moon in Scorpio is a way to let out my anger in a healthy way kickboxing, going to the gym, punching something, journaling, um, running around, something where you can let this heat and fire and all these intense emotions that may be surfacing at this time out in a healthy way. Move your body, move your body. It's gonna be so beautiful at this time. And the third thing I would do around this new moon in Scorpio, because anytime we deal with Scorpio, we deal with dreams, we deal with the metaphysical world. Um, Neptune is heavily involved. So a dream journal is gonna be absolutely beautiful. There might be a lot of things coming in subconsciously, a lot of messages you need to hear, a lot of clarity you might gain from your dreams on what action to take and how to move forward and, and just really helping you evolve into the next chapter of your life. So. Dream journal would be really beneficial at this time. Your dreams might get really intense, starting kind of from the 10th until about the 16th. So pay attention, there are messages for you. So I can't believe we got through all of that. I know it's so much information, so I really honor you. Thank you for allowing me to be the guide of the cosmos to help you have better relationships. Make sure you like and subscribe, follow along on this channel. You can see I do a lot of relationship-focused content and understanding astrology. I'll be putting out more videos coming in 2024 that aren't necessarily tied to the astral weather, but helping you understand your birth chart and how you can understand the birth chart of your loved ones, your romantic partners, in order to understand their energy and how to blend it together to have better relationships. So I'm really looking forward to that. Little announcement, I have the 2024 Astrology Alchemy Journal. I've rebranded it from the Astrology Retrograde Journal into the Astrology Alchemy Journal 
for sale. You can head to the description box below. I am receiving them from the publishing company this week and I'll be shipping them out by 1111. So if you haven't purchased a copy before, you can head to the link below. You'll see the website with the pages. There is full moons, new moons, sun seasons, retrogrades, ritual ideas, journal prompts, the chakras and herbs and things that you can do around the time of the lunations. So much information in this journal. Also, if you want to get your 2024 astro forecast reading, I have opened up my calendar. I will be closing my calendar on December 10th and won't be doing readings again until January 10th as I will be out of the country. So if you're looking to do your astro forecasting for the upcoming year before the new year, please get on my books ASAP. The link is also in the description box. And I'm going to send you so much love and light as you navigate this new moon in Scorpio. Just allow the transformation to happen. You are going to be a beautiful butterfly by the time we get to the spring of 2024.